Hi, this is Debbie, and today I'm going to take a look at the Neat and Tangled February release, which consists of four stamp sets, two individual dies, a stencil, and a pack of sequins. In no particular order, I'm going to take a quick look at each item, and then come back and take a closer look. Starting with a Cottontail Cutie set illustrated by Elena Rizakis. We are a bunny-loving family, with my son having two white rabbits, one of which has a flop here that he never learned to control, so this set won our hearts immediately. The set also has matching dies. Next we have the So Lucky set with a fabulous large sentiment along with a few accompanying images and again this set has matching dies. Moving on and we have another cute illustration with the extra special set. I love the sentiment in this set and also how the chick has some cute accessories too and again this set has matching dies. Next we have the unique topography set. I love the contour lines in this set and I think it would be great for those tricky guy cards. The set also comes with a great range of journey and adventure based sentiments. In addition to the four stamp sets, there are also a few standalone items such as the scallop stencil and scallop die, aimed at taking your backgrounds to the next level. I'm excited about the final die. The doily envelope die cuts an envelope with intricate details on the flaps and is sized for an A2 card. Last but not least, there's a new sequin pack this month. Peacock feathers is a combination of richly coloured and gold sequins in a range of different sizes. So let's take a closer look at the Cottontail Cutie set. I've stamped out a few of the images on white card with a copic friendly black ink. The dies in the set match both the little girl and rabbit images, as well as the carrot, flower and egg. I've attached the corresponding dies to the images and held them in place with washi before running them through the big shop machine to die cut. I've stamped the Happy Easter sentiment in teeny bikini ink and trimmed into a banner and I hope you can see how easy it is to create cute scenes with this set. For my card for the neat and tangled sneak peeks, I used copics to curl the little girl with her basket of eggs with a bunny popped on top and holding a carrot treat for the rabbit. And I mounted these on a sparkly ink blended circle. The lovely sentiment in the So Lucky set is a great size to be a focal point for a card. Here I've stamped the sentiment in black ink on a white panel of card and then stamped the accompanying four leaved clover images in jelly bean ink. Each of the clover images has a matching die. I've attached the dies washi and then ran them through the die cutting machine and these would look lovely dotted around the sentiment. I think the smallest image from the set could be used to cut individual segmented leaves to create a larger four-leaved clover. Moving on to the extra special set, and I've stamped the chicken egg in black ink. I love how cute the chick is, but it's the accessory images which really won me over with this set, and how they can take the chick from cute to fun and on-trend nerdy. There are matching dies for all the images in this set. I've cut the chicken egg with their dies, and then stamped the sweet sentiment in Tina Bikini ink, and I love how these pair together. I don't think I've seen a set like the topography set before with its lovely contour lines. I've applied a powder tool to a piece of Nina Desert Storm card and then stamped the image in clear embossing ink. I think the tone on tone look looks great at this point, but you could equally white heat emboss to get a different look too. I've created a card with the set for a blog post next week by white heat embossing the image on watercolour card and then painting a variety of tones throughout the image. I loved how it turned out and meant to share a peek of it here with you today and then I forgot that I've already sent it out to a friend's son. Moving on to the scallop stencil, and I have a long-term love of applying white embossing paste through a stencil to give interest to backgrounds. I've taken the stencil to a piece of fog card, and then using a spatula and taking a small amount of the embossing paste to swipe it over the surface. And then of course the fun part is always lifting the stencil to reveal the pattern that has been laid down. I love the texture that embossing paste adds, but you could equally spray mist over the stencil or create an ink blended background. There's also a scallop die in the February release. I've cut the die from white card and it looks lovely overlaid fog card, but I think what I really want to do with this is lay it over a lovely watercolored piece. The last of the dies I have to show you today is the doily envelope die. It comes as two dies, a large die that cuts the main body of the envelope with the top and bottom flaps, and then a second die which cuts the side flaps of the envelope. I've die cut the envelope from white card and as with all intricate dies, it's worth having an extra shim in your die cutting sandwich to make sure that the intricate pieces are fully cut through. Another good idea is to have a pointed tool to help push out all the little doily pieces. Look how gorgeous that detailing is. I've cut the main die for the body of the envelope and then used the smaller die to cut the two side flaps. The dies also impress the relevant score lines for folding the envelope together and I ran those over with a bone folder to make sure I got nice crisp folds. I've added score tape to both side flaps and removed the backers of the tape and then attach them to the main body of the envelope. With the envelope now complete, you fold in the two side flaps, and then the bottom, and then finally the top flap. I think this would look lovely with a wax seal, 
or a heart sticker to keep the envelope closed. The other side of the envelope is without detailing so you can add the recipient's name easily. Just one final mention of the Peacock Feather sequin pack, which I had meant to pour out so that you could see the selection of colours and sizes better. But that concludes my look at the new Neat and Tangled February release. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've mentioned today, as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at LimeDudaDesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today, and if you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'd be delighted if you subscribe to this channel. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.